I go in there, and what the publishing deal did for me is put me in a position where I didn't have to go get a job, mm -hmm. a nine to five, and I didn't have to sell drugs anymore. Yeah. Because I'd had my record deal and I ran through that money, it wasn't no real money. And then my publishing deal wasn't no real money. But I think my, my record deal, I, my advance my, probably was like 50 grand. Mm -hmm. And I don't even, I'm not even sure I got my full advance. I might've only gotten 25. He didn't get his full advance. Yeah, I think I got 25. So I got a small set of 25 right. there. I get my publishing deal. I get another small set of 25 because my deal is worth a hundred. My initial, my initial advance is 25. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to get 50 after I turn in some songs. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole thing. Yep. We didn't get there, but I need like another 10 because I got to survive because now I got to get me in a, I, we got an apartment, you know what I mean? From my, my record deal, we moved. I finally got a bed. I bought the biggest bed I could find. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like from this floor to this, but I'm never going back to the floor at this point. So I'm like, I gotta get another deal. I go do this little bullshit deal at Warner Chapel. They gave me twenty five thousand. I'm starting to run out. I asked for another ten. She hooked me up. So now I'm at thirty five. During that time, where I'm signed to Warner Chapel, this thirty five thousand is literally lasting me like a year. From the town, I like nothing. When I'm hopeful, slip a small city or some, but mostly no one forgets. On the outskirts of where I've been dreaming since a kid. Thought I was cursing, never see a radio hit. A Grammy, the industry is something even close. Miles outside of What's going on, all my hopefuls? This is JC Flames. And what you just saw there was an interview on the RB Money podcast featuring Tank and Jay Valentine. And what you saw there was an interview with Jay Valentine. So he's one of the co founders as well as one of the co hosts on the podcast. As I've told you guys before, it's one of my favorite podcasts out right now. They not only talk to artists um, about songs they've written, songs they've sang, produced, uh, all those things, right? But they've also talked to artists about some of the business, some of the knowledge, so other artists out there know what's going on in the business, right? So as you can see right there, uh, Jay Valentine's talking about how when he first got his record deal, it was worth... 50 grand right but here's the thing is that and he goes into specifics here if you guys are paying attention he's talking about how when he got his deals worth 50 grand okay worth but they get they gave him a twenty five thousand dollar advance right so he was living off of that on top of he was saying he was getting publishing deals so it was like another 10 here that he got from another deal and he had to write more songs for his original record deal so that he can get the other 25, which he said that he only just got the 25 in advance. He never got the other 25. So what happened is that later on, he ended up getting another publishing deal to write some other songs and he got another 10,000. And if you even pay attention more, he was saying the first thing that he did was he got an apartment. He had to live somewhere, right? But also, if you pay attention as well, he says there that he lived off of that 35 grand for months, right? So picture that. And also, I like how they kind of break it down from there when he's talking about he ends up linking up with Damon. Now, if you guys don't know about the underdogs, it's kind of when he goes into that. And I didn't really put it on the clip because it's a lot that he's talking about. Um, it's a long clip, right? But. What he's talking about is he met uh, Damon. So Damon Thomas and Harvey Mason Jr. were the co-founders, the two co-founders of the underdogs. And they were a hot producing duo in the 90s. And ironically, I said duo, but technically they weren't because they had a lot of writers and producers that were helping them. But they never really either they didn't credit them or they got more of the lump sum than some of these other writers and producers that helped them. But of course, they went under the moniker of the underdogs. And of course, I've been paying attention to a lot of the episodes and they've talked about it in the past and whatnot. All the politics and bureaucracy that went on at the underdogs. And it's really cool to see because I grew up with loving R&B music and I love the underdogs as producers. I always assumed it was just those two guys and that was it. And if you look in a lot of those writing credits, they did have co-writers, co-producers and all that stuff. And um, a lot of times what happens in the music business and it may not be to their fault. And, and a lot of times uh, Jay Valentine and Tank talk about it in there. 
you know, it's business, you guys. So a lot of what they would get, they would give a portion to them, but they would get more of the lump sum or what have you. Um, or they would fight over who wrote what, which parts they should get publishing rights for or royalties for all these things. Right. And that's why he's kind of breaking it down. And I love how he's talking about that 35 grand. He had to live off of that. He went and got a California King bed because he didn't have a bed for the longest. He was sleeping on the floor of Damon Thomas, who was one of the co-founders of the underdog. He was sleeping on the floor at his house. And he's, he said it later on in the interview that he hated sleeping on the floor. It was for months and months because Damon Thomas at his house didn't have much furniture. So the first thing that he did when he got his own apartment, Jay, Jay's talking about how he got his California bed and he was like, man, I couldn't wait to. But notice how he's talking about when they were in this process of writing with Damon Thomas before they formed the underdogs and all that, they met. Dark Child. Now, Dark Child was also another R&B uh, producer way back in the 90s, early 2000s, who was really hot. He had money way before them and even some of his songwriters, and he broke bread with them and whatnot. And that's why he's talking about how they had Rolexes, they had diamonds, like they had money, money. The craziest thing and the reason why I wanted to show you guys this clip to all my independent hopefuls to not only give you guys hope, but this is the reason why as I've gone into this series and I've given you guys more knowledge, more things to watch out for, and I've been dropping gems on you guys with these interviews and stuff and reacting to them because I want you guys to know and pay attention how much producers make and how much writers make, even engineers sometimes, they make a bag, right? So don't get caught up if you're a singer or a rapper right now. Um, or anything like that, don't get too caught up in being in the front stage. Don't be too caught up in being like, hey, well, I want to be huge and I want to be famous. Don't get too caught up in the fame because sometimes you may not get the bread that you want compared to you being a producer or a writer, right? Sometimes even an engineer, like they get the bags, right? Sometimes with these publishing deals and the royalties, you can get that. And I know recently... As I'm talking about this, Spotify changed the royalty threshold when it comes to artists and all that stuff. But you guys keep this in mind that Spotify is not the only streaming service for music, right? It's not. So you have Apple Music, you have Tidal, um, you have Amazon Music, and most of them pay more than Spotify anyways when it comes to artists, right? So, and also I've been watching my brother Curtis King, love his YouTube channel. I encourage you guys to go check out his content, but he always talks about how, you know, it's not the only streaming service out there. And I think recently he took his music off of streaming platforms, period, because he was like, I make art. I make great art. I really took my time and my patience and put my effort in this. Come and actually buy my music on my website because I think it's worth this. And Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, all of those, they still want to break bread with you. They want to be the middleman. And it's like they want to always get the money. and You don't want to pay them. I mean, you're more than welcome to do it yourself. And that's the point of these videos that I always give you guys. You know, stay hopeful. What I mean by that is also make your own way, make your own lane. There's other ways to get money out here. And I love how Jay Valentine was breaking it down on R&B money. And that's why he even starts off the clip saying kids, because a lot of people don't know. And unfortunately, up until this point, you've had a lot of gatekeepers in the industry and in the music business and artists find out the hard way, unfortunately. So there's always different ways to make bread. You guys stay hopeful. Like I said, please make sure you hit that like subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on new videos. I got some other how to's coming. Don't worry. I'm not slacking on those. You guys, I just been so busy with the holidays. All right. But again, my name is JC Flames, and yeah, stay hopeful. I'm out.